A while back, I had this ancient Skype account that I had not used in over a decade. One day, out of nowhere, friends started texting me saying they got weird links from my old account. A friend messaged me saying something like, Hey Shannon, why did you send me a link to some sketchy crypto site? Well, it turns out somebody had found that old password from a data breach for Skype. They logged in pretending to be me, and that's when I realized that inactive does not actually mean invisible. And also, don't forget about your old account. Luckily, I was able to get back in, I changed the password, and I added two-factor authentication. But it was a huge reminder that old accounts can definitely come back to haunt you. They're like digital zombies, still alive and also can be quite dangerous. So today we're going to bury those zombies for good because everybody knows what you need to do to get rid of zombies. What's up, s'mores? I'm Shannon Morse and welcome back to day two of the 30-day security challenge. The challenge that helps you take control of your online security and privacy one teeny tiny step at a time. If you missed day one, go check that one out first. We set our intentions, we wrote down all our devices and accounts, and we basically started organizing our digital lives. Today we are cleaning house. Yes, we are deleting those old accounts that you forgot existed, we're wiping off those dusty gadgets sitting in your drawer, and we are decluttering your physical devices. So step one, back up anything important. So before we nuke your old gear, you want to double check that you have backed up any files or photos that you still want access to while this stuff is still plugged in. External drives, NAS backups, secure cloud storage are really great for this. Step two is going to be gathering all your unused or outdated technology. Once you backed it all up, you can start unplugging things and stick them all together in a bin. Start with those old gadgets that you pulled out yesterday. If you are planning to sell, donate, or recycle them, you need to factory reset them first. That means erasing all your personal data so the next person cannot see your photos, your messages, or your logins. So grab anything that you don't need or you don't want anymore, put everything into a bin, and move on to step three. This is where we get to nuke all the devices. So here's the quick breakdown. Pro tip, disconnect them from your home Wi-Fi network in the settings before resetting anything. With smartphones and tablets, you want to go to settings, system, reset, or factory restore. On most phones and tablets, this means on Android, you go to settings, system, reset options, and erase all data. Or on iPhone, this might be under settings, general, transfer, or reset iPhone, erase all content and settings. With laptops and PCs, you want to look for reset this PC on Windows or erase all content and settings on Mac. So for Windows, that would be settings, system, recovery, reset this PC. For Mac OS, that'll be system settings, general, transfer, for a reset and erase all content and settings. Now keep in mind that older operating systems or smartphones may have this setting listed somewhere else, so do a quick Google search to find the directions if you are having trouble. With smart home and IoT gadgets for things like your Echo and your smart bulbs or thermostats, you will usually find the remove option in the app or there is a little reset button that you can hold for a few seconds. For IoT devices like smart speakers, lights, or thermostats, the other option you can do is check the app or manufacturer's website for reset instructions. They're usually listed somewhere there. Usually it's a long press on a pinhole button or a remove device option in the companion app for your phone. If you are ever unsure about how to reset these devices, just Google it. Google something like how to factory reset and the device name, which makes it super easy. Once you have wiped everything, you can recycle or resell it confidentially and confidently. Now security pros recommend e-cycling whenever possible. It's safer than reselling, but do what makes sense for your budget. Once your old gadgets are wiped, you can then safely start recycling them through certified e-waste programs my local county has recycling days every year, so I can hold on to everything till that day comes around, and then I can e-cycle everything for free. You could also sell them if they still work after wiping, or you could donate devices to schools or nonprofits, again, only after confirming your data is gone. I also like to gift old tech to family and friends after I have purchased an item for review on my channel. I hate leaving products just sitting around in my studio, especially if they're not 
not getting any use out of them after I have reviewed a product, so I declutter as much as I can. And here's a little 2025 upgrade. Before you drop anything off, use your phone to scan any active Bluetooth or Wi-Fi signals nearby. Some of those might belong to neighbors, so don't touch those, don't mess with them. Some devices, especially smart TVs and IoT hubs, stay connected even after you factory reset them, which is totally weird, but it does happen sometimes. Now, if you see anything like this on your network, just go into your router settings and manually block or forget those devices. Or if any devices are still connected to your phone, you can go into your phone's connection settings, choose that device and click unpair or forget. Now, if you're finding this video helpful, a subscribe would mean so much to me. Subscribing is a simple and free way to support creators on YouTube. So if you are following along with this challenge, hit that subscribe button down below, turn on notifications so you don't miss tomorrow's video. You can also grab the full checklist and a daily recap over at shannonrmorse.com. Big Patreon shout out to my s'mores. You can join them and support my channel by going over to patreon.com slash shannonmorse for perks like early video access and a private discord. As usual, all the videos on my channel are free to watch and I thank my YouTube members and my patrons for making that possible. So now we are moving on to part two, which is going to be deleting all of your old online accounts. So this is your digital clutter. Think of all those random websites that you signed up for shopping sites or newsletters, old social media, random forums from the 2000s. I was a forum baby. I might have been moderating a gaming forum at one point in time. All of those that you never log into anymore. Yeah. Write those down. Now, before you spend all afternoon just like rage clicking through settings menus and getting frustrated because deleting your data from all these accounts is super hidden, there's a website for that. It's called justdelete.me, backgroundchecks.org bought this website at one point, but they never updated it. So backgroundchecks.org slash justdelete.me at time of recording. This is a free directory that shows you exactly how to delete accounts from hundreds of different websites. It does not have all websites, but it has a really good list. So green means it's really easy to delete them. Yellow or red means it's tricky, but doable. And black means ah, there might not be a way to delete that one. Now, unfortunately, this site has not been maintained for years, but it is still a good reference point for one, reminding you of websites that you should check for accounts. And two, as a good starting point to figure out how to delete accounts. Start by searching your email inbox for keywords like welcome or verify or unsubscribe or newsletter, you will probably rediscover accounts that you completely forgot about, assuming that you archived some of those emails. Likewise, another pro tip is to scroll through your password manager and look for old accounts that you can declutter. I had well over 500 accounts in my own password manager at one point. Yeah, it's a lot. I signed up for a lot of services. I test a lot of gadgets and software, so it makes sense for me. You probably have a lot less than that, but I found about 50 that I could request for deletion just by doing a quick browse. I will talk more on password manager soon, but if you already have one set up, that's a really great way to get started. Now, if you can't log in because you forgot your password, just click forgot password and reset it. And if that website sends you your actual password in plain text, like read with your human eyeballs, yikes. That means they are storing it unencrypted, which is a massive security red flag. So delete that account immediately. You don't wanna be doing business with any websites or brands that are storing your data in plain text like that. That's, uh, that's gross, that's disgusting. It's 2025, y'all. Stop storing passwords in plain text. What the heck is wrong with you? Now, when you finish deleting, cross off all of those accounts in your notebook from yesterday, and you should now have a smaller, cleaner list of only the accounts and devices that you actually use. Now, some countries and states have legislation that has been passed, which requires websites to remove your data upon request. Yay! And that includes wiping your online account. So if you live in a state or a jurisdiction where this is a law, then take advantage of it. For example, Colorado, where I live, has the Colorado Privacy Act, which was just enacted in 2023. Since a lot of the state laws have been passed recently, I would highly recommend looking up your local consumer data privacy laws and seeing what's available to you. And that is it for day two. Today, you have officially decluttered your 
digital life. You have cleaned up your old devices, you wiped your data, and you shut down accounts that no longer serve you. For tomorrow, we're gonna discuss how to protect your home address, your mail, and even your phone number from becoming your next security risk. I'll see you tomorrow for day three. Bye, y'all.